Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at icing and ice protection. Let's get started. Now ice is a nasty, 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 nasty thing. And now theoretically speaking, if you are a VFR only pilot, you should very, very rarely see any form of ice on your aircraft at any point, because the concept is you're not flying into known icing conditions. Speaking of known icing conditions, let's take a look at what they are. So one of the things I notice here is my indicated outside air temperature is uh, sitting here at minus two Celsius. Um, my outside air temperature is about minus six Celsius. Uh, the other thing you'll observe here is if I look out the window, it is uh, moisture. Uh, what you need is visible moisture and you need temperatures near freezing in order to get ice. As a matter of fact, uh, my master caution just flipped on to warn me that I have icing. Now, people who are new to icing immediately get very panicky and I don't know what to do. Uh, but the big thing is, it's just a matter of understanding what the different systems do in what order to enable them. So first things first, our biggest danger right now is going to be not the fact that we're becoming an iceberg, but the fact that our engine is sucking in nasty little bits of ice, which is going to cause problems to it because we're a turboprop engine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fire up my uh, basically the ice veins here, the inertial separator, which will act to uh, basically redirect the ice out the bottom. That's step one. Step two, uh, we need to consider about all the other components on here. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek. One of the things I'll do just for the sake of demonstration is I'll actually level off uh, where the ice is worse here, just so we can kind of fiddle around with these things. There we go. All right, so we have several different types of ice protection. Uh, we have the variety that are basically going to be heat-based, uh, which are going to cook things, and we have the variety that are going to be pneumatic, which is basically going to pressurize things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by turning on our three switches right here. These are going to be responsible for defrosting all of our sensors for the purposes of stall warning, our pitot heat and static system, which is going to tell us our altitude as well as other critical components around that, and those alone. Now, if you're flying something like a Cessna 172, for example, um, you probably have pitot heat. It is considered one of the most critical components because it's going to be the only thing that saves you in the event that um, you won't be able to read any speeds or anything like that. All right, so that's good to go. So what other options do we have? Uh, we have what they have called windshield de-icing. As you can see right now, I've got a pretty nice little layer of ice on this thing. As a matter of fact, if I want to go to this view, uh, you can see everything's getting a little hazy. Actually, I don't see much haze on it, but that's okay. You can see from here, though, we're getting a little hazy. Now, the windshield ice is a very interesting control because of the fact that basically you have two modes, melt the ice or to go ahead and keep the ice melted mode. So if I were to actually pop this onto the melt the ice mode, uh, one of the things you'll notice is my electrical load on my aircraft spiked. And what will happen is this ice that is starting to accumulate on the windshield will slowly melt, uh, just like if you're driving a regular car. Now, one of the things you have to start thinking about, and this is going to get important, is our electrical consumption right now. Because we are using such a powerful element to melt the ice, and you can actually see it's doing a pretty good job right now, we need to be mindful that if we lose a generator at any point, we are going to basically blow half our circuit breakers because the electrical consumption of the anti-icing system is going to be so high. Now, one of the cool things is there is no reason for us to run the co-pilot anti-ice until we're in a situation where we need to create some kind of a reduction in asymmetry of drag or something along those lines because our co-pilot doesn't need to see anything right now. And you'll see by popping him off of this, or even better, I could probably just leave it on low, we've saved ourselves a significant amount of electrical load. Now you're sitting here going, well, what about these two? Can we shut his off too? Uh, you really don't want to shut off the anti-ice on the side of the co-pilot because some of the instruments you're probably not aware of are based on that. But uh, for the sake of demonstration here, I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. I'm also going to leave this off so we can allow some shenanigans to start happening on that side of the aircraft. Oh boy, <laughs> that's pretty bad. I'm glad uh, we have an anti-ice. Now, there's other types of anti-ice we have as well. And uh, this is where things get kind of interesting. We have what they call pneumatic anti-ice. Now, pneumatic anti-ice is a very interesting concept. And uh, let me go ahead and take a look here. Do you see this little black rubber kind of cover on the leading edge of our wing here? This particular item here actually inflates with air. And uh, what we do there is we use the inflated air to basically snap off the pieces of ice. And so again, I can look uh, basically you can't see it too, too well. But again, we've done such a nice job by uh, defrosting everything. It looks good again. <laughs> We need to just continue our climb to go find some more nastiness. But the way this works is kind of neat. And depending on what aircraft you're operating, it's going to be slightly different for this particular component. Probably should pop on the fuel vent heat. We need to have fuel. But the key thing here is that you have a certain amount of pressure, and we can deploy that pressure aggressively. Now, if I were, for example, to grab over here and crank this to this position, you will notice that my pneumatic pressure drops substantially. What I just did is I inflated, I don't know if you can see it, uh, you can't really see it. I've inflated that boot. Now, if I release this switch, what's gonna happen is this boot is actually going to deflate. 
Now, if there was any ice on there when I were to initiate that component, what would have happened is that ice, of course, would have cracked and snapped off. Now, one of the things they do, which is kind of interesting about this particular aircraft, is that we have different modes we can use here. We have an outboard and we have an inboard. We can pop it over its inboard, for example, and give it a quick little whack. And remember, we have the forward item here, which is going to be the switch on the left that I just hit. And then we have, see how it inflated? And then, of course, we have the main wing here, which we have to do manually. Now, some aircraft, uh, of course, of the uh, Beechcraft variety, will have a system that will automatically cycle those boots on and off in order to keep everything constantly kind of clean as we continue our journey here. Now, the nice thing is we got out of the visual moisture. So, uh, fortunately, most of that nastiness that we've accumulated actually went away. You can actually see that my warning light went off for that as well. Uh-oh, the party's starting again. We got our warning. Go ahead and make sure options are good. We already have this on low, which will help protect us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the ice to accumulate a little bit here so you can kind of see just what it looks like in action when you fire one of these boots off. As you can see, uh, we've got quite a bit of accumulation going right now. So again, we'll go ahead and pop those boots just as a demonstration. We've got the forward wing, we've got the back wing. We'll go ahead and pop the back wing, or forward wing rather. Give that a little thing. I believe they call it a canard, and you can see it is cleaned it off. We'll go ahead and grab that one in the back. Go ahead and pressurize it. Now, one of the things you need to be aware of is uh, whenever you're dealing with these components, uh, you'll notice here that I've left all my heats off. I'll put that on here low for a moment here to kind of get some of that ice off the windshield there. Uh, one of the things you need to be mindful of is you need pressure in order for this to work. Uh, that's something I did neglect to mention. Now, if I were to come over here, for example, and uh, turn off the bleed air from the left engine, you'll notice I have no pressure in here. So basically, I'm only relying on one system. So when I crank this, I'm still going to be inflating it the way that I need to. I'm just not going to have any pressure on that one side. Now, if you were to shut off the bleed completely, one of the things you'll notice is you can no longer pressurize those boots at all. It's also going to get very, very, very cold in here, which is going to be kind of unpleasant. But the key thing that you need to recognize is you do need some form of compressed air in order to use those boots. So the key thing with icing, of course, is uh, many aircraft uh, do have the ability to fly into icing conditions. Icing is worse when you're close to freezing with visible moisture. Uh, keep in mind that any icing that you accumulate, some systems are manual, such as the pneumatic version. Some systems are electrical. Uh, the downside to the electrical system, as I did mention, is electrical load. If you exceed the maximum electrical load possible, you're going to get yourself in a really big situation. Again, I'm going to intentionally load this as hard as I possibly can. And you can see with all the anti-icing systems going, if we were to lose a generator, everything would basically pop all the circuit breakers because there's just no mechanical or mathematical way we can run these things at a time. If that happens to you, you're going to be selectively running things in a sequence and declaring yourself an emergency to get out of danger. Enjoy.